Hey pilots, Drain Man here. Today I have a very special video. Today we are going to go over this brand new hot off the press flight controller. It is out and it is doing its thing and we're going to go over it. You guys are not going to be let down with this. Alright, so first thing it comes in this little tiny case. Nothing big, nothing special. It's just a little tiny floppity opity thing so let's go ahead and just dump everything right out so right off the bat we have the flight controller we've got three different connectors and we've got our screws and grommets I do want to go over this real quick they include an XT30 connector but don't let that fool you because you can easily and very well run an XT60 and you can put this thing in a full size quad. So don't let that throw you off. Alright, just to mention the grommets real quick, we have 8 grommets in here. So you've got more than enough to pack this thing twice. That means you can put in all your grommets, screw them all up, and then you've got 4 new ones again. Because hey man, sometimes you lose them on another flight control and you want to be able to pull one and use it over there. Because it's a 20 by 20 you might be mounting it in a full size quad. So they've given you the big hole so you can mount it M3, which is what I would most likely use. You guys are welcome to mount it any which way you want. But I would mount it M3. now. They do give you adapters in here if you decide you want to mount it M2. There's like five or six or I don't know. There might even be like eight of them in there. I'm not going to count them. There's plenty in there and it'll get you over from M3 to M2. So that's phenomenal because it is a micro flight controller. It's a 20 by 20 and it's a true 20 by 20 and it also has a true 25 millimeter board. So some of these boards are 20 by 20, but they're not true 25. So that's a good plus right there. The only thing I'm upset about on here is that it came with an XT30 because I like to get an XT60 because that's what I run. So I, I, I wouldn't be let down if they threw both in. I mean, hey, or throw us in the XT60. I feel like that's more dominant. Even though this is 20 by 20 board, that doesn't mean that we're not running it on a full size quad. And I'm going to tell you why in a minute, so sit tight. Now, let's go over these three connectors real quick. Because this is something that's truly astonishing to get three connectors. You're thinking, why do I need three? I really don't. You have a very nice connector pad right here. And this is going to come from left to right. You can pull the schematic up. I'll drop a link down in the video description. But it's going VBAC ground RX5 current. And then you have motors 4 through 1. So this is nothing special. It's a basic connector. And you've got connector cables right here. They're as easy as popping them in. And then now you stick this to a PDB or an ESC. And you, I mean, and you're good to go. You can't, you just can't beat that. But here's the cool thing. If you are running a AK32, which is a new hot ESC on the market, you've got a connector for it. Then you've got another connector, which is going to be for your very common Spedix GS25A. And that's the 25 amp. And here it is, ready to go. And then you've also got a third connector for the brand new AirBot Ori32. So you've got three connectors that are pretty much, I mean, they're plug and play with these three different ESCs. So you have the option to pick any one of those three ESCs and you can pop in the right connector and roll right off the bat. I did not say them in the correct order because I, I don't have those ESCs with me to know which one is for which, but they're here and all you got to do is plug in and plug in and you're good to go. So that right there is truly awesome. Don't let it keep you from using your favorite ESC. I mean, all you got to do is deep pin a couple things, reroute them and you're, you're in action. It's You just stack this right on any, any freaking ESC you want. Doesn't matter. All right, let's throw these connectors to the side. So we've gone over our nuts and bolts and screws and we've gone over our connectors now it's time to dive into this thing this thing is truly truly impressive it really really is all right so let me get you guys in here so this board here I know you're curious and I know you want to know if you haven't seen it or read it in the description this is the brand new I mean it's literally brand new to the market this is the F7 Talon Fusion now, Talon just dropped, or CL Racing, CL Racing, which I think they are partnering up with Heli Direct. 
Heli Nation just came out with a very nice F7 flight controller. It's a 20 by 20 just like this and everybody's got their eyes on it and that thing is just breaking records. It's just performing phenomenally. If you got one, I know you know it and I know you enjoyed it. What they did is they went ahead and they raised the bar a little bit more and they made this flight controller right here called the F7 Fusion. And if you've got the F7 talent, go ahead and throw that away and get yourself one of these because this board right here has two gyros. Yes, it does. And we're going to go over that some more. But for right now, let's go over what we got on the board. So you do have an F722 microcontroller. These things are truly phenomenal. You cannot get speed like this anywhere else. 216 megahertz. I mean, astonishing speed. The only thing faster than this is the H7. And that's, that, that chip is about as, <laughs> as big as this board. All right, you do have onboard 16 megabytes of flash. You've got your 4-in-1 connector, you've got your Betaflight OSD, and your two gyros are the ICM 2062, and as you can see, they're placed differently on the board. One is placed at a 90 degree, and it's called the 90 degree phase, and what it's doing is it's giving you twice as much input, twice as much action going on. You've got a very nice 5-volt switching regulator. You can hook up all the way to 8S with this, so if you're running a 7S or an 8S by any chance, don't let this 20 by 20 fool you. This thing can handle up to 36 volts, no problem. Full LiPo input. And it's got plenty of freaking filters. It's got LDOs on here. You've got LDO regulators. You've got your own dedicated LDO for your gyros. And you've got your own de dedicated LDO for your OSD. So that's going to give you some really clean OSD because you've got your, your own dedicated low dropout regulator. So you've got your USB, full size USB. You've got a full size boot button, which is pretty crazy that they fit all this on this little board. Let's go ahead and go over a quick pinout. So right here you've got your ground and you've got your 3.3 if you're running Spectrum or you need to do any testing. You've got a ground, a 5 volt, you've got your RX6 and your TX6. I do want to mention that you've got 5 full UARTs, meaning you've got TX and RX for 5 full UARTs. That means you're never going to run out of options. If you need to play something, you can. It does not matter. All right, then you've got your camera control, and you've got another UART. You've got TX2 and RX2. Then you've got your LED down here in the corner. Then you've got a 5 volt and a ground right here. And then you've got a whole other UART, TX4 and RX4 right here. So this would be a good spot to run your receiver. You can run it right off of TX4 and RX4. Because it's an F7, do not worry about finding an S bus. You do not have to run an S bus with this because it'll invert the signal all by itself. Don't worry about that. All right, that's going to do it for the back of the board. We're going to go ahead and head over to the front of the board now. All right, so the first thing we want to go over is the receiver and you can mount the receiver anywhere you want, but you've got a ground and a 5 volt and then you've got your RX and your TX. So if you're running crossfire right here, it, this is going to be RX3 and TX3. There's no reason why you can't run it here. That's a beautiful place to run it. And if you're running just a FR Sky, you can just use the RX3 for your receiver. Your camera's gonna go right up here. You've got your camera voltage, you've got your camera ground. Now, if you're gonna run camera control, it is on the back side, so you'll flip that over for your camera control. But your camera video is right here. It's the third pad from the right, from the left. One, two, three. Third pad right here, that's your camera video. It's got its own dedicated LDO like we talked about running through the Betaflight OSD. Now down here you have the option to choose for your VTX. You can choose full VPAT, which means that whatever power you're giving the board in, that's what you're going to get if you want to bridge this little tiny pad in the middle and bridge it over to this right pad. Or you can go ahead and bridge these two pads and just give your camera a nice clean 5 volts. That's up to you. For your VTX down here, you will go ahead and solder up your video wire. You've got your power and your ground. I do want to mention that even though this board is tiny, it's only a 20 by 20. They've already crammed more than you can even imagine onto this board. Then they went ahead and allowed you to have up to 36 volts on this board. After that, they decided to include right here on the positive switch 
a freaking pit mode. You have a dang pit mode switch right here on your freaking VTX voltage. And then you've got a whole nother UART for TX1 and RX1. I don't see any reason why not to use TX1 to run your uh, smart audio on and then you can tell beta flight. And then the RX1 will probably just end up not getting used if you're doing that. And then you've got another 5 volt in the ground if you need it. For any reason, if you want to run I2C or I2C, squared C, whatever you want to call it, if you want to run that and you want to run an external compass, you can go ahead and use TX3 and RX3. That's up to you. Uh, that depends if you're going to be running a GPS on this. If you are, then you've got plenty of UARTs to run it, and you can even run a compass. Betaflight doesn't support it at this time. All right, right here you've got your buzzer. If you want to run a buzzer, you've got your buzzer ground, your buzzer positive. Another thing, too, is you have LED pad right here. Um, it is fully mappable, remappable. You can pull your LED pad off and go ahead and put on for another motor if you'd like. This thing has built-in voltage monitoring resistor, which is super awesome. It creates full protection everywhere on this board. I still cannot find anything on this board that's missing. So although this board is a 20 by 20, as you can see, as opposed to like a a full size board right here if I take this 30 by 30 you can see the difference this is a much smaller board they did not waste any space they utilized every bit of space and they even include for you able to hold up to 8s on this thing I don't know you need to just go ahead and throw out your other board because there's no reason why not to run something like this I am super stoked to throw this in my next build I hope that I went over everything I hope that you guys fully understand everything about this board and now if you were on the fence about buying one or getting ready to buy the regular old F7 you won't do that you'll go ahead and get yourself an upgraded F7 Talon Fusion other than that I want to thank you guys for watching and I I hope to see you on the next one.